All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our TELOPS year-end data showcase or data extravaganza, as we like to call it. Um, so it'll be uh, a little bit more lighthearted than standard heavier webinar. Uh, so we'll be showing some exciting new data and images that we've, get, we've been gathering throughout the year. So I'm Antoine Dumont. Uh, I'll be with my colleague, Joseph Derek here. And uh, so we'll be alternating uh, and there should uh, talking about a few things we've been, uh, data we've been uh, getting throughout the year. So before we start, we'd like to do a little poll just to uh, know a little bit more about your knowledge about infrared imaging. So I'll be sharing this. So you can just click on uh, your answer here, uh, knowing, uh, just telling us that you're an expert, you know a little bit about thermal infrared imaging, if you've heard of it or you just have no experience at all. So we'll give you maybe 30 seconds or so, and then we'll just take a look at the poll, then we'll be able to start. Okay. So let me close this and let's share answers. So that's pretty interesting. Um, almost half of the people not having any kind of direct experience with the technology. So that's great. Um, I will say it's a great webinar to attend as the first introduction. There's some nice, exciting images that we'll be able to share with you and it's gonna give you a bit of an idea of what kind of application uh, are using for technology, what kind of images you can get with our with child camera. So, um, sharing this. So a good assortment of people otherwise are going from expert to beginner with infrared technology. But now let's start our webinar. And uh, just a quick overview of what we'll be talking about today. So we'll be going over many instruments that we have here at Telops, some uh, HD cameras that are new, multispectral, other kind of fast cameras, other uh, tools that we have in our software using our cameras. So cameras are in the midway, cameras later on that we'll talk about the short wave range of infrared. And uh, towards the end, we'll be talking about hyperspectral cameras as well. Some uh, very interesting measurements that we've been gathering this year. Now I'll pass uh, the webinar to my colleague Joe, who will talk about Thank you, Antoine. Thank you, Antoine. So the uh, first bit of data that we're going to show today is from the new M3 Super HD camera. Uh, this is a high definition camera with an FPA uh, max size of 1920 by 1536 pixels. Uh, you have to give up a little bit of frame rate compared to our fast cameras, but the added resolution uh, really makes for some nice imagery. So if we can go to the first set. This was uh, a water toss that was recorded just outside of uh, Telops headquarters in Quebec, Canada last February on a negative 15 C degree day outside. Um, so boiling water obviously uh, thrown into the air. It rapidly uh, condenses and evaporates and leaves behind a cloud of steam and snow. Um, and as you can see here, if we skip to the still images, I think these are pretty powerful. You can sort of see how the the water begins to laminate uh, and then tensile webbing forms. Uh, and, and by the end, before it hits the ground, uh, most of the water has, has changed form. Um, so that was a fun one there. I do have to add the disclaimer, please don't try this at home. I've seen too many videos online of people missing the throw and hitting themselves with the boiling water. Uh, so again, these stunts were, were performed by trained professionals. Don't try this at home. So with that, we can go on to the next. Yes, uh, so we have that really nice video from uh, Albuquerque, so with the SHG camera as well. And here we can see it's a really nice uh, full view of the of the town. But if we zoom in even more with the Super HG camera, we can really see a nice definition of an actual really small bird just passing by, and we can see the bird flapping its wing, uh, and that very small part of that window that we can see. So we can see the amazing resolution that we get with our cameras and we get still a pretty good thermal contrast just with the bird 
compared to the background of the scene. But it's really impressive. We can't do a webinar about nice images uh, from Telf's camera without talking about the Chateau Pontenac. So the hotel is not really a castle, but the iconic uh, hotel from Quebec City. We've been doing some uh, testing and measurements with the Super HD camera, looking that uh, if there's one image, one picture you've seen from Quebec City, it probably contains this hotel, this building, uh, it's really nice. And with our Super HD camera, uh, you can see the uh, beautiful pictures that we're able to get, uh, even uh, with the, the river here that we can see and the docks. So the thermal contrast is really good with the thermal camera. With that scene, even in the cold, we get really nice pictures. And uh, what's interesting is that with thermal pictures like this, uh, from depending on the angle that you, uh, where the sun is and the building, let's say the brighter side of the building would be at a temperature, a temperature that you notice in your camera that is much higher than minus 20 degrees Celsius. But that's because of the sun raging. So on the other side where you have the shade, it's that, it's that difference of temperature. That's something you always have to keep in mind when you're doing measurements with an outside scene. So great pictures with the Super HD camera, some other pictures here. And a really interesting thing that can be done with the camera as well is sort of a nice panoramic mosaic image that we can get uh, combining multiple pictures together. And uh, it has a really high resolution. It's a file that can even scroll through to really look into every part of that scene and that mosaic. Really nice uh, resolution, amazing uh, pictures that we can get with those new super HD cameras. Now, Joe will talk about uh, the multi spectral camera. Sure thing. Yep. So, the multi spectral camera is uh, one of our most powerful uh, spectrally as well as temporally. Well, you do give up some temporal resolution compared to the fast cameras uh, for the maximum speed of our filter wheel, which is 800 hertz you gain uh, spectral fidelity. So you're able to place up to eight uh, spectral filters in our filter wheel. Uh, here you can see we have a configuration for a combustion filter wheel with OD filters, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide, hydrocarbon, through flame, and an H2O filter. Um, this camera can come in, in various sensor sizes and up to uh, the M3K model, which is able to do the full 800 Hertz uh, in multispectral mode. So with that, we'll show the first um, video footage here. Which is uh, from a collection that we did earlier this year at Worcester Polytech in Massachusetts uh, with their fire protection engineering department. So this is a, a wooden crib burning experiment. It's a standard experiment in fire research uh, where it's made of known materials and they monitor it as it burns down. And what's interesting here with the multispectral camera is you can see the different signal levels uh, from the different uh, contributing factors with the filters that are listed there again on the left. Uh, so I'll point a couple out here. Well, filter position one in the top left is washed out uh, with the broadband filter. Filter position two in the middle left uh, gets some good signal with the, the added OD1. Uh, filter wheel five in the bottom right would be our hydrocarbon filter. That's where we see the most signal uh, because there's a lot of hydrocarbons uh, coming off. And then filter wheel seven, that's actually the one that's most interesting to me. This is our through flame. Um, so you can see uh, this, this filter is positioned to avoid a large majority of the combustion components, uh, things like CO, CO2, and the hydrocarbons. And so what we can actually see is the, the combusting surface, the actual wood through the flame. Uh, so that's a pretty powerful one there. With that, you can take over, Antoine. Yeah. Um, another measurement that we've done, uh, it was done with the multispectral M3K camera. Uh, it's an interesting, oops, let me start this playing. There we go. So it's the cold spray application uh, that was done in Montreal, the National Research Center uh, or Canada that's based there. there are, they have multiple facilities throughout the country. Uh, but in this facility, uh, one of the applications they look into is cold spray. Uh, it's a classic application to use thermal cameras to try to get a good idea of the temperature of particles in flight. Um, I can see here, so that's kind of the setup that we have. The metallic particles that are being sent 
for uh, repairing surfaces or creating some additive manufacturing structures. But as you can see, they're, they're very, very small particles from the range 40 to 70 microns in size. So we do need a microscopic lens to do that. But our thermal cameras are equipped to uh, being able to fit those lenses. So with this uh, lens, we're able to get a good view of those in-flight particles. And this shows the difference of image that you can get from, with your cameras. So looking at the temperatures of the, those particles, but if you change the exposure time, you can see that those particles are getting so fast, about 600 meters per second. If you just change that exposure time a little bit in your software, you'll basically stretch the amount of pixels that the particle sends and radiance into, into your detector. So it's a really important parameter to take into consideration when you do that kind of measurement. Now, we did some measurements with the multispectral camera because this team in particular wanted to look at the whole process of cold spray. And so they wanted to be able to see the change in emissivity during the process. So we can see uh, at the bottom right here, in particular that filter, we can see the jet of particles quite well compared to the other filters where you don't see it as much. Uh, so it wasn't optimized for that kind of application. It was a demonstration, of course, but it showed that it's possible to effectively resolve that uh, that procedure and then do that emissivity measurement uh, throughout the process. For the other part of the procedure, we looked at the growth of a structure using those, nano, those microparticles uh, during the process. So a really beautiful image uh, with the multispectral but in a fixed mode. So just a simple one thermal image. So we're able to get this. Uh, and with or without the microscope lens, we could look at either the full structure or the, just the side of that structure growth and think that the displacement of that side is showing the thermal behavior during that growth. So that was really interesting. For next, uh, sorry, next set of images, we'll be talking about cameras that are not multispectral, just are fast cameras. And uh, in this case, we'll be using the M3K, so our fastest camera available and the fastest camera in the market. And the M350, which has a really amazing image quality, slower the M3K, of course, but it still has that ability to go relatively fast uh, for a thermal camera. So the resolution of the M3K is about 320 by 256, whereas the M350 like the higher 640 by 512. Joe will be talking about the uh, next uh, measurement that is tensile strength testing. Yes, so these uh, tensile strength tests were measurements we recorded uh, with researchers from the University of Rochester, my friends uh, Steve Burns and Chris Pratt. Um, so they were actually interested in imaging the elastic portion of the stress strain curve. Um, for its, its uh, thermal properties. But as we can see here, this is an aluminum sample uh, that behaved a little uncharacteristically. Um, and with the line profile that we've added here in Reveal IR, you can see that uh, the entire sample heats relatively uniformly. And then a band uh, begins to heat uh, irregularly at the bottom of the sample, which eventually moves towards the top of the sample uh, before rupturing at the top. Um, so this was uncharacteristic compared to the other samples we'd seen, but was a, a neat uh, feature we were able to recover by imaging the full frame and able to show with Reveal IR. That was a fun one there. Here we have another. Uh, this was collected with my friends at Lake Drum Brewing in Geneva, New York, our local craft brewery. Uh, so the question was posed, uh, how long does it take the beer uh, to cool after, after a, a night closing? The next morning, the beer in the end of the tap has warmed. About an inch and a half into the wall, there are there's propylene glycol cooling. Uh, but how long does it take for that inch and a half of warm beer to, to leave the tap, right? And if we look down at the plot here, at 100 frames per second, it takes a, a little over 100 frames, just over one second to cross that 5C barrier uh, where they would feel comfortable serving the beer to a customer. So the idea would be to, to pour out that first second of warm foam and then slip the glass under. But uh, that was a pretty fun one there. Got to drink the mistakes, too. Another test that was done with some uh, past camera 
So the, the M3K was some laser sintering uh, for the additive manufacturing application. So this was done at the University of uh, Toronto in the material science department and Professor Zhao group. So an interesting tool that can be used with uh, software is called the EH EHDRI, yeah, where you merge uh, images that are uh, acquired simultaneously, but at different exposure times. So in the example here, we have an image at 25 microseconds of exposure time, where you can see the high temperature very well in this case, but you don't, you have a lot of noise otherwise in the rest of the image. When you merge it with another image at higher exposure time where you have a much nicer background and no noise around the colder part of the scene, then you can get a overall nice image for your, your video, for your acquisition. So that's an example that was done showing the tool and software using a soldier iron. When we, we did this with the additive manufacturing uh, measurement there, then this is what we obtained. Or should be playing. There we go. A really beautiful image uh, where we have a nice scene without much noise, and we can see the very hot part of the surface very well uh, during that process. A pretty useful tool when we have a dynamic scene that has cold part and very warm part at the same time. I'll let Joe introduce the S1K series with the short way infrared reach. Sure thing. So the, the shortwave camera is another one of our fast series broadband cameras. Uh, but instead of being in the mid wave, this camera has a spectral range of 0 0.9 to 1.7 microns. Uh, the S1K specifically, which is what we're going to show videos from here next, has a 640 by 512 detector. And the shortwave cameras are typically better at seeing uh, higher temperatures with better dynamic range. So this was a test from our battery research collections, which we completed in New Bedford, Massachusetts with the New Bedford Fire Department and the Hazmat Guys uh, podcast. And so this was two uh, 21700 lithium ion cells. So two uh, basically slightly larger than a double A size cylindrical batteries. Uh, and the, as you can see, the explosion was, was quite massive. Uh, what's interesting about this particular clip is that if we slow it down uh, as far as we can, you can see uh, the first battery enter thermal runaway or uh, eject gases and combust. And then about 38 milliseconds later, uh, the second battery is, is uh, ignited in a chain reaction. Uh, so that was pretty interesting to the firemen and, and the other folks. And this overall was a, a great collection, um, which we, we do have a webinar on our website if you'd like to check that out. I'll talk a little bit about our hypercam instruments, in particular the airborne mini series. So these hyperspectral cameras, the, the mini series are in the long wave part of the infrared spectrum, so 7.4 to 11.8 microns. And the difference with the other cameras, if you're not familiar with uh, hyperspectral technology, is that it takes a thermal image but it basically creates a 3D cube of information. So you have your thermal image and each slice of that cube is an image at a specific weight and you can change the resolution, spectrally speaking, of that data cube using uh, your instrument, using our software. So those hyperspectral uh, instruments are used for multitude of applications. In particular, this year, I wanted to uh, focus on our methane service that's been uh, increasing in popularity and in efficiency in particular. And we are getting some really interesting results uh, trying to detect and find uh, methane leaks in the oil and gas industry. So our hypercams uh, can be fitted in any uh, flying uh, vehicle. So we have helicopters, airplanes, even drones, as I'll be discussing a bit later. But I wanted to show a specific measurement campaign that was done recently this fall. So that was done in Alberta. Of course, we can't have a Canadian measurement campaign without a good box of pin bits from Mr. Morton uh, right next to the very expensive instrument. Uh, but we're getting, uh, that's an example of a um, 
a visualization of the methane leak uh, from the airplane or the helicopter. And that's the kind of scene that we had. So this mission campaign was set with a government agency to really test our instruments from PELF and test the methane service. And where they had control of everything, they have the they have the truly trace of all those uh, those methane leaks, and basically Telus had to go in blind and do those measurements. And we're talking about tens of thousands of data cubes of measurements with the hyperspectral camera. So there were many many different leaks that was done over a few days. Uh, that's kind of the kind of view that we're getting. Uh, the camera is equipped with a visible camera as well to have a good view of the scene. And uh, our analysts worked tirelessly to go through this to uh, send a report to the government agency. And we recently got the true values of those leak rates. So it looks like this, part of the analysis that's been done, uh, this is a great plot to show uh, the success of the missing service. It, you know, at first glance, it doesn't, it doesn't look as nice as other images we're showing today. But it shows that we have that parity line that goes here showing that the hyperspectral camera that we use for the service has a detection limit that's calculated for every flyover. And we compare that to the true leak uh, rate, basically, of the method that was given just recently. And we can see that above that detection limit that was calculated, we have a 92% detection uh, for those, those leaks. So that's really good just by itself. Those 8% missing, it doesn't mean that it's just a leak that was there and doesn't uh, wasn't detected as simple as that because it was the reason it wasn't good in a way. It mainly because sometimes the leak was even outside of the field of view of the camera, but that had to be considered in the statistic because it was within that flyover. Or sometimes it was because that plume of the of methane leak was inside the sh a shadow of the flare stack, which means you're you don't have that thermal contrast that you expect, that, that you need from that detection limit. So that has to be considered. It shows that we basically obtained the vast majority of those leaks, and we're even able to detect some of those leaks below that detection limit, saying that it's relatively conservative, that detection limit that we're calculating. Anyway, going back to more funny stuff and fun stuff, I wanted to talk about the drone aspect. So. This is our Hypercam Nano, uh, like I mentioned here. The beard is not included, um, but it's a new project that our team of engineers has been working really hard on. And it's an amazing feat of engineering, being able to put all the technology into, into a much smaller case for the hyperspectral camera. And we're able to put that on a drone that is operated uh, from the ground, of course, from an operator. And uh, it allows a much higher level of flexibility for those hyperspectral missions. So we can see that kind of, uh, the kind of flights that are being done with the drone here. And I want, I want to show you something, some tests that has, have been done uh, this year. So with some Freon being released in a field, uh, the camera can do some uh, inline mapping or targeting. So with the fixed targeting point, uh, it still has the same amazing quantification, identification capability as the other hyperspectral camera, but in a much smaller unit. So it's very interesting. It's still a, a prototype, but there's been uh, two projects. So it's been deployed for some projects to some customer or customers already, but uh, it should be coming out in, in the market in 2024 with Eagle. There's also two other cameras, but infrared cameras coming up in 2024. We can't say too much about it, but keep an ear out for this. Uh, you should be hearing about this uh, very soon. So I want to thank all the people that have been uh, collaborating with us and people from Telops at the top here that made all of these questions uh, possible. So, um, these are all the people from Telops. Um, I'm not going to name everyone here. It would take a bit too much time. But um, for the fire protection research at Worcestershire Polytechnic Institute, it uh, was really great. Uh, University of Rochester, like Joel mentioned, for the tactile test. University of Toronto for the laser centering. Lake Drum Brewing for that beer test. 
Plasma Guys Production. Uh, they've been working with Joe and Mark, our field application engineer from the US, for those really interesting battery research stuff. And the National Research Center of Canada in Chapin, in Montreal, uh, where I, we did some uh, additive manufacturing, so cold spray measurements. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, let us know. Uh, do you have any questions? We'd love to answer any kind of question that you have right now. Otherwise, uh, you can visit us at telop.com to get a bit more information, or just send us some emails at fae at telop.com. So thank you very much. I can add uh, to that as well. Uh, I believe we do have a webinar on fire research that was uploaded this year, a webinar on battery research. Uh, my friend Steve Burns has a paper on his uh, elastic uh, measurements in the tensile strength. Um, so all sorts of things there, but if there was anything that you saw today that you'd like to learn more about, please do send us an email to fae at telops.com. Um, we'd be happy to to discuss it with you more. Exactly, and I will add that we have a series of webinars coming uh, for 2024. Uh, applications that weren't mentioned here. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. One particularly for mineral identification for hyperspectral imaging that wasn't talked about here that we know is coming in February and plenty of others coming. So um, any questions for from you guys? All right. Well, we'll stay uh, just a little bit longer. If there's no question, uh, please. Oh, we got a quick uh, one here. Sorry? Do the cameras come with Christmas hats? Uh, the answer is unfortunately no, uh, but I think I think we can we can direct you to the right place to get a, a camera sized Christmas hat if you need one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for attending and happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.